Okay, P Street Garage, and I'm back out on my cruise with issues. Uh, this is getting to be a full-time job. Uh, I'm looking at my uh, engine temperature gauge, and uh, normal operating condition, the needle should be down in the middle, I'm told. Uh, I've been driving for about half an hour, I'm pulled over now, and um, as you can see, the needle is on 50. That's the highest I've seen it. Uh, it moved a little bit and it moves a little bit and then goes back down moves up goes back down um, I'm gonna try to sort this issue out. I have ordered a Thermostat housing with built-in thermostat and I have ordered two uh, Engine temperature sensors one is in the water outlet valve and the other one is in the radiator I'm gonna change all of these hoping to uh, fix this issue all right okay so my engine temperature sensors did come in and uh, there's two of them I got these from Rock Auto this one is actually a genuine GM part there's the number there and this one fits in the water outlet valve which is right here this is my water outlet valve and that's the sensor right on top of it and uh, I've got my battery box out of the way which is going to make life a lot easier I probably will remove the big uh, uh, pipe right above it um, I will change this little sensor out right now and uh, it's just a matter of undoing the connector pulling that little metal clip and popping the uh, sensor out um, the other sensor which looks absolutely identical. Uh, I wasn't able to find a GM one for this one, but I got a Delphi. And uh, they do have different part numbers. If you go to Rock Auto, you can actually buy these as a pair. If you buy the cheap, cheap ones, as in they're like $10 a piece, you can buy them as a matching pair to change both positions. Uh, but I went to my GM dealer, and they have two different sensors, and they recommended... Um, uh, that I get the proper ones, uh, so I didn't get the generic pair. I did get this one, which is a genuine GM. This one here is a Delphi, but it did cross reference to uh, the sensor that goes in the radiator, and it's pretty hard to see. There's another one of these sensors in the radiator, it's down way down there. You can see it on the side, I don't know if you can see. You probably can't see that, but I can see it by, right by the lower rad hose. I see the little metal clip and the wires. So that's going to be popped out and replaced. And I have also ordered a, uh, a thermostat and housing. Unfortunately, it hasn't arrived yet. Um, I was hoping to do all three at the same time. Uh, this car has the typical, uh, like I mentioned, AC will not run due to high engine temperature and my engine temperature uh, needle will not go up. Uh, the highest I've seen it is 50 and then when I get back on the highway and drive uh, it plummets down to nothing and there's just not as much heat in the car uh, as there should be. The blower just doesn't feel that warm so it's probably the thermostat that's failed open. Um, I mean, better to be cold than to overheat. But in the wintertime here in Canada, we need some heat. So uh, unfortunately, that part is not here yet. I will do the two small sensors. Those will be out of the way. It may solve the issue. I doubt it. But uh, these parts are relatively cheap. And uh, I have them. So this car has uh, 200,000 kilometers. Let's get these swapped out. I'm going to try to to do them without draining the coolant. Uh, it might be a mess, I'm not sure. Apparently it can be done. So uh, let's get on with that. Okay, so I got everything out of the way. I got that big piece of pipe out of the way, uh, including the battery tray. Uh, that gives me a lot of access. So I'm gonna try to reach in now. This might be a total mess, I don't know. I'll have to get that connector off. So there's the connector off and here's that Silly little sensor held in with an O-ring. I've got this 
Let's get this out of the way so that doesn't get too wet. I've got this pick, one of these little dental pick, pick tools. I'm going to attempt to pull this metal clip out. And when you buy your sensors, they don't come with a metal clip, so my fear is losing this. Okay, I got it out. I got the clip out. There's right there. Didn't lose it. Okay. <laughs> now. Now, now, now. New sensor. Old sensor. I gotta pull this out with one hand. I'm gonna try to do this crazy. I'm gonna try to do this one hand. Try to shove the other one in. Um, all right, let's give this a try. Okay, well, here goes nothing. The O-ring should come with it. Is the O-ring with it or not? Because if the O-ring's not with it, then you gotta go fish for it. Okay. No water yet. Here's the new one. I just don't want to make a mess and lose all my coolant. Oh, there it starts to go now. The bugger. All right, out and in. Out and in. Okay. Painless. Now let's look at the old one. Okay. Okay, it came with it. It came with it, so we're good. We are good. This should stop. The seal is in the... God, this, I, I, I keep repeating myself, but this is a, this is pathetic. Everything on this car, and I mean everything is plastic. And everything is held on with these silly little tiny clips. So, okay, that's that. I may need two hands to, maybe not, I'll try. This goes in like this. Yeah, I think I'll need two hands to put this clip in. Just gonna put that clip in and push it this way. And that's it, and I'm gonna reconnect and put everything back, and then we'll move on to the radiator one. Okay, as simple as that. Clip is back in, and the connector's back on. I'm gonna wipe up this water here so that when we run the engine later, uh, we'll make sure we get no leaks. But uh, this was uh, fairly easy. Uh, the hardest part was just figuring out how that clip goes back in and even when the clip is back in I mean the whole thing is uh, let me show this to you everything is uh, everything moves and the clip slides in and out a little bit I mean it can't be pulled out unless you force it but uh, I mean that's I don't know gosh pretty cheap but anyway, that one's done. Let's move on to the rad. Uh, the rad is quite a bit tougher access, so uh, let's have a peek at that one. Okay, let's move on to the uh, radiator sensor. And uh, I removed the, uh, the air inlet hose. I've got this moved out of the way. I was hoping I'd be able to get my hands in here. Uh, and the sensor is down there. I can barely touch it, so... Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this uh, radiator hose. Uh, there's a clip right here. And also one on the bottom. Uh, right at the rad there. God, it's so hard to see. Anyway, it's the same type of uh, small clip arrangement. I'm going to attempt to just put my little dental pick in here. I'm going to pull up on this and pull this hose off. Uh, again, I didn't want to do it this way because uh, uh, I didn't want to have to drain the coolant because I'm still going to have to replace this, uh, this thermostat and thermostat housing at a later date. But uh, so be it. Uh, I just can't get my hands in there to get to that small sensor. Uh, I've got a pan underneath the car. I'm going to pull that hose off, I'm going to capture whatever I can and uh, change that sensor and then we're going to top back up. I'll take the car for a spin, see if my temperature comes up. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, I would say it's the issue with the, uh, with the thermostat and housing. I'm pretty sure the issue is with this, but I'm going to do the sensors now anyway. 
Uh, let's unhook this and drain that cool. So this came out just as is. So towards me, curve in, away from me, curve out. And that should just push straight down into that groove. Now this engine is cold, so there should be no issues. Obviously I should have mentioned that first, do this on a cold engine, but I figured anybody going this far with their car would know that. Let's try to pull this out. It's gonna make a mess, but I do have a pan underneath. Oh my god. Okay. So those O-rings are probably caked in there, which means I should probably get a new hose. Anyway, let me try that again from another angle. Try to rotate it a bit. The AC hoses are in the way, but I'm not touching those, obviously. It couldn't just have rubber with a with a note with a uh, with a clamp. That'd be complicated. Fancy. Is that coming? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. My pan's underneath. I said I'm gonna capture whatever I can. All right. Let me put this down. Okay. I've got my uh, hose folded out of the way, as you can see. It's off of this connection. I just pushed it down. I've got to get in here now. I can get my hand in. And I'm gonna get this clip right there. I'm gonna get my hook on here, pull this up, and uh, pop this sensor out. Okay, let's try that. So here's my old sensor. I just popped it out quite easy. But as you can see, the uh, O ring did not come with it. The O ring is stuck inside the rad. So I, let me go dig in there and try to pull that out. And then we will get this new one in. Here's the clip. So, I read that this could happen in the rad, uh, and it did. So let me go with my pick, try to see if I can pull this out. So I got the uh, I got that sensor back in. I got pulled the O-ring out. I got the new sensor back in. I got my uh, coolant hose reattached. I'm just in the middle of. Uh, Topping up the antifreeze there. I went out and got some new stuff. You can hear that gurgling a bit as it's working its way down. Here's my two old sensors. Um, I'm going to top this up. I'm going to start the car. And uh, I'm going to take this for a little spin. Uh, make sure we got no leaks uh, around where those sensors were. And uh, particularly around this, this hose, this upper... This is considered the, uh, well, what is this? Is this the upper or the lower? Well, upper on the engine, lower on the radiator. So anyway, uh, yeah, this, uh, those O-rings, obviously, uh, I think when I, when I do get my thermostat, I will get a new hose. But uh, for now, I just clip that back on. I'm gonna, the O-ring was looking its age, so hoping there's no leaks here, but uh, you never know. Uh, everything's held together with O-rings and clips, so we'll take this for a little spin and uh, see if our temperature gauge moves up and uh, we'll check for leaks. All right, so I just started the car. Let's take this for a little spin around the block, see if our uh, temperature gauge comes up any higher. If it does, bonus. If it does not, well, as mentioned, we've got that... Uh, thermostat and housing coming. Let's see how she performs. Okay, well, I've been driving for about uh, half an hour. My uh, engine temperature is still sitting cold, so um, it was a good attempt with the two uh, temperature sensors. Those are changed. Now, at least I know they're new. They're good. I got some new coolant in there. Uh, let's get this car back into the garage and uh, let's tackle this um, this thermostat all right okay well it's a couple of days later and uh, our part has arrived and uh, this is what the thermostat looks like a Chevy Cruze uh, it comes with the housing it comes with a sensor built in all plastic with a, an o-ring for sealing I'm amazed how this car is built kind of incredible 
So this is a from Rock Auto, of course, and it's a Dorman part. Here's the part number. Supposed to be as good or better than the uh, factory GM one. And uh, there it is from Rock Auto. If you can see that, $36.99. Uh, yeah, pretty cheap, pretty cheap parts. I mean, I can't complain about that. So let's get this pipe out of the way again. We'll remove that upper radiator hose and uh, we'll see what uh, what is involved in popping this off. Okay, well, I got my three uh, screws out. As you can see, the thermostat's kind of hanging there. Uh, there is there is another uh, connection on the side that I've got to get. It's uh, just a hose clamp. So I'm going to get that. This is the connector right here. A little connector right here. And uh, as I pull this off, I just saw the spring and the retainer, everything just sort of popped off. So that's a good indication that this uh, thermostat was failed. Let's take this uh, hose clamp off and then we'll compare the old with the new. So here's my old thermostat and housing. Uh, that's how it came out, basically fell apart. So good indication that this had failed. Most likely it failed in the uh, open position. So this is the, uh, on this side, this is the part that has the hose clamp. So uh, you gotta loosen the hose clamp and kind of pull on this out. Not too hard, because if you ever pulled the entire hose out, the hose goes all the way underneath, under the turbo somewhere, so had to be a little bit delicate with that. And this is our new part, the Dorman part. Looks pretty much identical. I see that they've improved, uh, They've improved one feature. Uh, the GM one had the sensor uh, which could come out. So in my opinion, that's another weak point. One of those clips with the uh, O-rings. Uh, so the Dorman part, have a, they've eliminated this. This is just solid. So you just gotta plug in. So let me put this back in, three screws. I think, well actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna slip this hose on first because there's just no access to that one. I'm gonna slip this hose on and then wiggle this into place, um, tighten this up, and uh, make all the connections and top the coolant up. Hopefully, our uh, temperature gauge will uh, respond and we'll get some heat out of this car. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, so I got the car running. Uh, I don't see anything pouring out. Doesn't look like any leaks or anything so far. Uh, this looks okay. Got the reservoir topped up there, kind of. It's a little bit high, but there's probably some air pockets in there right now. All right, let's uh, let's put the cap on this thing, and uh, let's take this for a spin. See if she warms up. Okay, so I've been driving for about 15 minutes, and I uh, see my temperature needle now is alive again. So it's it's kind of a cold, dreary day. Not super cold, it's a few degrees above freezing, but uh, my needle is moving now really um, consistently for the first time. So I did, uh, like I said, about 10 minutes. Uh, I think that was my issue. It was the thermostat. The thermostat had failed. Obviously they're designed to fail in the open position, which is good, but uh, you do need some heat out of your engine. and. Um, I did change, as you just saw, I changed those two sensors as well, so we should be good to go now. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope this can help someone.